blessings and shalom brothers and sisters uh hallelujah there have been many of us a few of us a few of us called to praise in this hour uh from father that i keep hearing from his messengers it was said on my spirit with a desire to lift up and praise and worship offering seven days a week seven times a day and i started august 1st or 2nd so it's been a month already for me as I continue now into the Feast of Trumpets or whenever the Holy Spirit presses upon me to stop. But hearing other brothers and sisters uh, in the body talking about how we are to be praising Father, you know, right about now during this time, lifting up our voices and exalting his name, it is confirmed confirmation that honestly I, I didn't need because worship is always something that never offends our Father. It moves his heart, if anything. You know, therefore, I wasn't on the fence questioning, you know, my offerings my praise offerings but it is confirmed confirmation that that just really blesses my soul even more because in my own relationship i i, I knew father was pleased with the offerings uh so to hear it from this sister and that sister and that messenger and that prophet uh of, of how he is requiring requiring this from all of us to do due to the spiritual time frame we are in now it's just really edifying it's it's like being in love to where that that feeling is edified by the other person because you both no, it's mutual uh, between you two. So, so Father is moving uh, my heart. Uh, I'm moving His heart, and it's a mutual love connection. And, and it's so it's so good to know that that's going on with other brothers and sisters in Christ. Also, all glory for God for it. I'm happy and and so in love with Him. Period. <laughs> and it's it's been a very hard and rough almost year for me. I've been dealing with a lot of things uh, that had that had me depressed. Uh, and my oil was just empty. I was just running on low for a while. I was praying to Father to restore my 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 joy, uh, my faith, like David prayed, and he did gradually, spiritually and emotionally. I was coming out of it, but physically not so much. I became joyous, but you know I didn't have them to go and turn a cartwheel outside about it as a result. So that took a while to catch up, and and I feel like I'm I'm back. Uh, these praise offerings have really ushered that completion of peace and joy in physically also. So I'll glory for that because I'm dirt. But leaning on Father for the past several months, just seeing how he has brought me out of the oppression and depression I was in, I'm so grateful. And it was it was a hard process, but you know, I know my father. There there's a TikTok where and my kids always say they learn stuff on TikTok, and it's, it's it's true. You learn a lot on TikTok. I regret to say, but for you know my business, I have a TikTok, and I was I came across a Christian TikTok where there was this guy. He was in his house, and the the, the voice of Jesus spoke to him, giving him instructions of what he is to do now, and then what is he then what he is to do next after that, and then what. He is to do next after that. Then what is he to do next after that? And then what is he to do next after that? And the guy was just keenly listening to every direction from the voice of Jesus with a complete layout of what Jesus wanted him to do. And then in the same skit, he was again in his home, but the word reality was written above. Uh, and then you hear Jesus talking to him, giving him a instruction. And then there just there's just silence afterwards as the guy just sits there and wait on jesus to say more with anticipation because i think the first instruction was jesus calling him by his name and then telling him to quit his job so when he doesn't hear jesus saying anymore after that like he did before you see the guy like okay lord i will quit my job but what now or what else do i do after i quit my job and the voice of jesus just goes silent as, as the guy is hilariously waiting with bated breath on the voice of jesus to say something like right now and you have to have a relationship with Father to really appreciate that video because people tend to think Jesus sh should tell us from A to Z of what we should do in the time frame we want him to do, to do it in. And But in reality, that's, that's not how our Father works. He doesn't give us all the answers and clues at first. He gives us bits and pieces at a time until he is ready to give us the next bit or more. And he does this because, you know, he's he's wise and, and so such a genius. But our faith won't be can't be tried to be to or to become formidable in Christ if we get all the easy answers and get all the clues to solve the puzzle right away. You know, that's why it, it, it was hard for me because Father did the exact same thing. 
with me when you're emotionally strong in your flesh. It's going to be grievous to wait on him until, you know, he decides to answer your prayers. Uh, and you have to make a decision to get your flesh in check and practice the spirit of patience or not. Uh, but I've been particularly... Uh, praying for patients and got tried and that's the thing you know know what you pray for some people say be careful what you pray for because you're going to get it if you are 100 percent expecting it though it might come in the form of something you know jarring but you know god runs god runs this you know not you so trust him in the process and that is easier said than done believe me i know but that's that's why we have Father to help us get through the hardships of how hard things might become or how, how hard they are but, you know, just follow Father no matter what it feels like, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it seems like, and you'll have no regrets. Because I'm, I'm so blessed today, more than yesterday or even last year, and had I succumbed to all of the attacks of the enemy, you know, just depressing me and oppressing me, I would have lost what I have now. All glory to God. Uh, everything is a test, brothers and sisters, and you need to adapt a mindset that God will deal with those that you deal with to avoid error and thinking father in your walk is is testing other people in your life or around you more than he is really testing you and father will test you to test someone but don't ever think you have zero percent of the testing as well father's always testing you even when you think he is testing someone else and he could very well be in fact testing that uh, that someone else but always remember that you're in a relationship with him and say test more for you than everyone else. We tend to forget that as we grow in Christ, or at least I did. So thank you, Heavenly Father. All glory and praise and majesty and honor be to you. Yeshua HaMashiach forever and ever, our Savior, our Deliverer. Amen. And I wanted to come on, guys, to share something with you, uh, some, something grave with you guys. It's been grieving my heart for years and seeing many immersed more in rebellion and rejection and sin and of course their idolatry father's really revealing how angry he is about it um i had a baptist preacher tell me god takes out bad people and put them in heaven in a state of rebellion if they refuse to act right where they could cause more harm to themselves or others but my bible says that god allows the children of disobedience who refuse to repent to continue in sin to fill up their measure of iniquities therefore their judgment will meet the very measure of all their iniquities which is getting ready to happen and that's a horrible reality there are people who have been long gone who will still in our day meet their judgment up to the measure of their iniquities because father does not forget when there has been no repentance involved in the sins of, of men that they commit ignorantly or willfully it's particularly uh particularly even more horrible and bad and and not really good right right now to curse anybody it's not it's not good to do that on any day but we're so close to where we are like we're we're we're, we're, we're so close to the end it's 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 really not okay to curse anybody right now, such as a, for you know, example, a bad mother who let her boyfriend rape and kill her own child. You know, father is showing me others are cursing others. And I mean curse as in out of how one feels or knows or hears of something atrocious uh, that get incited by anger and hate, probably unforgiveness, for just from hearing or knowing something atrocious has went on. Uh, they get inside it and they wish for example the bad mother who allowed the rape and murder of her child they wish she were to get raped and she should be dead they wished it upon her they speak that out of their mouth as it's coming from hate and anger at the atrocity of the behavior towards the child now dead and father is revealing many will reap the same curse that they speak against others that man who isn't um respectable that it isn't a, a pastor in my opinion greg Locke, who at the time of the war between israel and the hamas uh, said horrible things supporting israel blowing up the palestinians uh and how they deserve to die basically and he is a false charlatan so i'm not surprised with the lack of empathy and he wasn't the only only one a lot of brothers and sisters unfortunately felt it was okay and justified for israel to do what they did but I felt in my spirit then, as I still do now, because Father is steady revealing it 
to me that what people are saying or are cursing towards others is going to be paid back to them with their own coin by their own words like when pharaoh by his own words brought upon he brought about death to his firstborn child while wishing death to the israelite children and we have to understand when you don't have the love of Christ and the spirit of grace and mercy and you project alternatives like hate, rage, anger, unforgiveness, you're going to reap that no matter how bad the behavior of the other person was to, the, to this situation or that situation. It's not godly or of the spirit to wish an eye for an eye. We have to be careful with that. The book of Jeremiah talks about what is going on now in 2024, just as now uh, in the scriptures, they were a nation uh that you know did not obey the voice of god nor receive his correction but steadily continued to do evil in the sight of god and the book of jeremiah don't say he took them out to, to heaven so they you know uh so they can't continue in disobedience the book of jeremiah speaks and, and talks about how god allows them to steady keep filling up their measurement of their sin because he's about to horrifically deal with the full measure of it when i go out and hear you know people say the lord's name in, in vain in anger or in pain and you know with the heat here in, in texas it's too hot you know for people and they curse they'll be like gd is hot you know or they'll say jesus effing like i can't I, like i hate even saying it it almost pains me in my spirit it used to cringe my spirit but it's nowadays it's more hurtful to me hearing the blaspheme spoken towards god all the time father is probably saying imagine what it's like for me because you know, I'm in a little corner and tucked in the world, tucked in the corner of the world, but he sees and hears everything throughout the whole, the whole creation. And when I hear someone speak death, torment, suffering towards others who are bad people or those who have personally wronged them or because they just absolutely hate those people, uh, it's, it's spiritually gut-wrenching painful because the Spirit is revealing to me that that just got noted down upon that person. There are people who, who use their mouths all the time to give life or death, as the Bible talks about, the tongue. And it's being recorded. It's being recorded down against them. And there are many who are about to get a recollection of something they said in anger or hate or unforgiveness uh, years ago or just yesterday. They got written down about them. And it's almost terrifying to me. And I'm not even the one who said it, but the Lord is revealing his anger about it. And it is about to be quenched. His anger is about to be quenched upon many who don't have a clue of what awaits them. There are people, for instance, who are looking and seeing and hearing the horror of bad people all over all over the world in their home and they're cursing people in, in their bad behavior. This is how clever the devil is making the world look at human beings doing evil things to get you to curse that person so you can be found guilty in the eyes of God. You got the demons, <clears throat> excuse me, influencing humans to do bad things. Others see people doing those bad things and then they curse the person doing those bad things. And it's all being recorded because the spirit of, of grace and mercy uh, and, 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 and to curse and not pity and pray for these people are more, are more you know, re relevant in them to do. They rather curse them than to uh, pray for them or exemplify through their mouth verbally, you know, pity and grace and mercy but they get in their feelings at this bad act or action and they curse people and they curse the ones who who, who commit the bad doing and the one who who cursed one doing the bad doing will be found just as guilty uh, as the one who did the bad deed that's how the devil plans to win each case when you and i have to stand before the magistrate as that is also talked about in the bible of luke twelve fifty eight. When you go with your adversary to the to the magistrate and, and make every effort along, we should make every effort along the way to settle with our father, Yeshua HaMashiach. Lest we be dragged to the judge and the judge deliver us to the officer and the officer throws us into prison. This is basically what is, is, is Luke 12, 58 is talking about. So we need to hasten to make our peace with God in time before it is too late. When, you know, we go with our, with our adversary, the devil, to the, the magistrate to whom... The appeal is made and know that the devil has more of an advantage against us. We're going to be in danger of being cast out. Uh, and we have to give diligence to be delivered from that, to get discharged, lest judgment be given and execution awarded to us. We should not let our, our quarrels 
go to an extremity, but accommodate them in time, deal with things in us like pride, hate, unforgiveness, uh, anger, or our adversary has all the aces up his sleeve that he needs against us. And we are provoking God to his displeasure in, the, in, in that state we, we, we choose to stay in and not realizing judgment is coming because blasphemy sins, it can't persist forever. It will one day be deal, dealt with. And if we stand a trial before Father and insist upon our justification, the cause will certainly not go well with us. It will certainly go against us. And the judge will deliver us to the officer, the minister's in his justice and we shall be cast out into the prison of hell and the debt will be exact the utmost though we cannot make you know a full satisfaction for it it will be continually demanded to the last might of it to be paid which will not be all eternity christ's sufferings were short i'm talking about the refinement and the purgement but the value of punishment is is it can be made fully it will be made fully satisfactory because in the sufferings of doomed sinners what is wanting in value must be made up in endless duration. So that is what Luke 1258 is talking about. And people in a moment where the act where their actions uh towards other people and the things going on around them and, and which are not right, to where it incites uh rage in them, anger in them, hate in them. These are these that's only one aspect of how people are cursing people out here in the world. There are a lot of curses coming out of the mouths of many people dealing with family issues the unfair immigration issues, the bad referee play call against one's team, personal hate. This is how the devil is making others be found guilty as they pour more and more and more of the measure of their sin uh, that will one day be reckoned unto them. And the most hardest revelation uh, about all of this is the children of these people. Fathers is still also revealing that not only will they suffer, but their children will suffer too because everybody knows the book of daniel going into the lion's den how he went into the lion's den and got out but it is never told at the end of how when daniel comes out king darius not only threw the three men who set daniel up to go into the lion's den but how he threw down he he threw down their wives and their their children all all of the three men's families into the lion's den with them too the sins of the parents Will, will be also for the children. That's been a pattern in the Bible. It's history. It's a pattern that proves God is the same then as he will be today. Many are living lives not in Christ. And when the army, the invaders come, God revealed to me that they will spare no children. Children who are innocent, who will be no harm or threat to the enemy, but they too will be taken, taken in the most vile way or slain along with mom and dad. For the measurement of sins will transfer onto the children as well. This is why it's so important to be in Christ for the sake of your children. The judgment coming for parents and idolatry and sin will come for their children too. So many parents are offering up their children to Baal right now in, in, in many, many different ways. Back then, you know, they directly walked up and handed their babies over and, and threw their babies in the fire, like directly. Now, many people are doing it in multiple different ways. They pay $1,000 for a Taylor Swift ticket for the kids to go idolize that that team satan demon they have them around evil and perversions in these gay pride parades etc etc just filling up their measure that will not go well with them and their beautiful babies if they do not repent and turn to christ and and and, and become delivered uh out of out of sin and even bondages or strongholds we must be walking in obedience in christ we must be living holy in christ and come out of serving false gods and, and serving sin and, and this and, and living for this world that is owned by the devil. It's one nation under Satan right now. Don't ask me to stand up to pledge no allegiance to a red and white and blue cloth blowing in the wind that has deserted my father years ago. Plus, I pledge to one and he isn't up on a flagpole. But if you think God won't take out your child, you better hop out of false doctrine. You better come out of what you think you know about him and read the Bible for yourself. We are way worse than Sodom and Gomorrah ever was. And you expect God to be nicer to us and your children while you ain't living for him right now, nor obeying him right now, nor teaching your kids in the ways of, of godliness right now. You think Father's going to give you passes for that? You actually expect God to be merciful to your child when you're out here supporting death to all babies, supporting a woman's right to choose? You expect that? And Father is just. 
and he gives mercy to him to whomever he he will give mercy to but if you are not covered and sealed, which is earned by the lifestyle of living holiness, obedience, and repentance unto him, you and your kids are doomed. It's history throughout the Bible that will manifest again. He took out kids in Moses' day. When, when men came against Moses and Aaron, those men, their wives and their children fell down into the ground. God opened the ground from underneath them, and they all fell into the abyss all together. It, was just, it wasn't just daddy. You know, God killed the entire family too, for the sins of the parents. We need to repent. We need to come out of this world. We need to live for Christ, not the idols in our hearts. And in this world, be, that be, let that be, you know, your job, your money, your family, your hobbies, your sports, keeping up with the Joneses, worried about materialistic things, serving other people uh, above God, loving other things or people above God, standing in addictions, not taking care of your temples, not forgiving others. Uh, which is number one, coming out of lust, which is number two, unforgiveness and lust. I can't figure out which one is today's number one sin uh, of man, but I would say those are the number, those are the, those are the top two. I, I want to say unforgiveness, and that's mind blowing because unforgiveness is the deal breaker with God in writing. That is the deal breaker that it that the Bible is very clear on that will not guarantee you a ticket into the kingdom. And there are millions reeking of unforgiveness out of their pores right now. That is why I pray because I feel the measurement going is is going up. It's filling up of the iniquities of, of other people's sin and what they what they say because there's, there's a lot of people cursing, cursing. And once it is once their iniquity is filled up, because cursing out of your mouth is just one aspect of the sin. But you know, Father is about to handle it in a way many are not going to absolutely not like. And Father Revealed, which this video is to the ones obviously not in this category, where some are reprobates. Therefore, they're living for the, the purpose of punishment that they don't see coming. And there's nothing a brother or a sister can do up until that point uh, as far as them repenting and turning to God before then. They are giving over to be 100% tried by fire when the Antichrist shows up physically to make... Um, to make a bunch of lives miserable because we know the antichrist is going to come and, and make a bunch of lives miserable and it is incredibly sad because it doesn't have to be that way but when you choose to live in your own way father will allow that but the full measure of the consequences that is what is coming that is what is being revealed to me and i pray we are all not, not found guilty and if we are if hearing this there is some conviction uh you feel please don't ignore it conviction though it feels horrible it's your best friend because when you stand before the judge you'll remember the times conviction tried to warn you because it made your flesh feel bad but you ignored it and you're going to realize how much it was there to help you out of love due to the reality you might face that won't be pleasant because you chose to ignore it so don't ignore it now please if you have things in your heart that should not be there you need to acknowledge it confess it and repent it before god and ask god to replace those things with his love and in the spirit of mercy and the spirit of grace so you can be filled in your heart with those spiritual gifts instead that therefore you're not speaking curses you're able to love and you won't be held accountable or guilty uh in in the eyes of father this is this is the word from the lord because he is very angry right now it's, it's it's a beautiful time coming we're getting ready for the the final feast it's it's a wonderful wonderful time for those to the 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 true sheep i will say the true sheep it's it's a beautiful wonderful time coming i'm so excited but i'm also uh heartbroken because there is grave rebellion grave rejection of father uh, there is so much sin going on in, in abominations, and he he he's very angry right now. Uh, so if we are not where we need to be in Christ, we need to we need to get there. We do, and I love you all. Check out my website, thewarriorsforchrist.com. I will leave that in the description box. It's the warriors for number four Christ. Warriors is plural. But I have three three categories of prayers and, and more prayers on there. I have spiritual warfare prayers. I have deliverance prayers. I have, a, you know, general prayers. Plus, there's a quiz on there uh, under the Mo uh, Moment of Truth tab. You know, please go check that out as well. But until next time, guys, I love you all. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, blessings and shalom.